Hello everyone, my name is Frank Summers. Welcome to my Toon Boom Harmony tutorial on Master Controllers. So Master Controllers uh, were first introduced in Harmony 16. As of this recording of this video, I am using Harmony 20. I'm happy to say that Toon Boom has been continuously developing the Master Controllers over the past few years, and so that's really great. Um, there's actually a few different types of Master Controllers. We're going to be specifically talking about the Grid Wizard Master Controller. Um, I'd also like to preface that master controllers are a pretty big topic. There's a lot to talk about in them. So this video is probably going to be pretty long, but I'm going to try and chop it up into three chapters um, so you can easily go back and reference, uh, reference it. So that said, let's just jump into Toon Boom here. We have a little baby head here, a little baby. And we're going to make a master controller to control this baby head here. What I did before the video obviously started here was I created these poses of the baby looking around the screen. And I'd also like to point out that this rig is purposefully very light right now. I purposefully made it symmetrical. Um, there's not a lot of business going on here. Um, and again, I did that on purpose just so we can pay attention to the topics at hand. Uh, but I do have a couple of deformers hiding in here. I have, you know, a curve or an envelope deformer on the head. And I have some envelope deformers on the brows just to give us a little bit of flexibility. I don't particularly use uh, envelope deformers and brows. I usually like to use a drawing swap or drawing substitution, I should say, for that purpose. But again, for this video, I wanted to give it a little bit of extra complexity. But for the most part, super simple, basic. I think there's a cutter in the eye, and that's really about it. So like I said, I pre-built all of these poses before the video started. I made sure I took my time and made sure all these poses looked exactly the way I wanted them to look. And now that I have my poses set and I'm ready to begin building my master controller, the first thing we need to do is actually show our master controller toolbar. This is what it looks like. I already have mine showing, but if yours is not showing, just right click in a gray, blank gray area and just drop down to master controller. So the first thing we need to do is find a selection of nodes that we want to feed into our master controller. Um, so again, we're going to be dealing with the baby's head here. So we want to grab this group that contains all of the nodes for our baby head. You can also make this selection from the timeline. Both of them work. And once we have a selection of nodes, we go up to our master controller toolbar and click on grid wizard. It looks like a little grid. Just click that. And that will pull up our grid wizard. Now, we can load a preset from here. There's a bunch that we can choose from. But for this video, let's just choose a 3x3 three three grid and hit OK. This is a very basic 3x3 three three grid. Come on now. So the first thing we're going to do is take all of these poses that we built ahead of time. And we're going to assign them to these little red positions within our grid. And we'll talk about the rest of what's the, the rest of these fields inside of the master inside the master controller grid wizard. <laughs> That's a mouthful sometimes. We'll talk about all of this stuff in a little bit. But first thing we want to do is start feeding these poses into this grid wizard. And it's very easy to do. We just go to our first frame here, which is what? Frame 21. And all we have to do is just click on the corresponding position that we would like to assign this pose to. And yes, it says select frame 21. If I wanted to, I can change it, but since I already have a selection, it filled it in for me. I just hit OK. And before I continue on, uh, let's just talk about some of these new um, fields that have just become available to us. The identifier is just giving you a chance to label it. Um, by default, it's really basic. It just says A, but if I wanted to, I can call this, I don't know, look, uh, screen left down. You know, as you, you can make it as descriptive as you want, but I'll put it back to just our defaults. The next thing it's referring to is our frame number. Again, if we wanted to, we can change this. It's referring to what pose that's sitting on what frame we would like to feed into this particular position on the grid wizard. And the next thing is our position fields, which are currently right now a negative 2.0 and a negative 2.0. These are the X and Y coordinates of that particular point. We're going to leave that alone for now, but later in the video, we'll change that. And that's all you really have to do. That's the main gist of building a very basic master controller. Uh, we're essentially signing poses in a logical way that would fit within this master controller. So let's move along. This doesn't take too long. The baby now is looking screen left, so I'll assign 
that pose to this point, hit OK. And I think the rest is pretty self-explanatory. We'll just continue on here. I'll really quickly assign these poses. I will be making more master controllers in the, in the I'll fast forward the rest of them in the ones that I create later in the video, but I want to just walk through this first one. And that's it. Now they're all green, you may notice. And once I finish doing that, we actually have a couple more options that just became available to us because we have finished assigning all of these points within our grid wizard. Let's talk about this area right now in brief, but we'll get back to it again later. Um, you'll see if you step through these um, uh, the monitored attributes, these are all the uh, nodes that we fed into the grid wizard, if you remember, when we selected the baby head. These are those nodes. They're hanging out in here. Uh, we'll return to this later, but what I would like to point your, draw your attention to is this guy down here. Filter attributes. <laughs> Another mouthful. Filter attributes for which the value does not change over time. What does that mean? So we have a bunch of nodes that we fed in here, right? And for example, I know that the head shape here, this actual shape here, I know that when I was building these poses, I didn't actually move the head. I used other pegs to kind of push the head around where I needed it to be. But I know I didn't do anything to the head itself, which means there are values that are being fed into this grid wizard, this particular master controller that are not going to be used. And what we can do is we can push this button to filter out those values that are not actively adding to this grid wizard. So what that does is it makes the master controller a little lighter and a little more uh, easier to load up into your scene. So right now it says attribute count, what does that say? 149, so if I click this guy, it just knocked it down to 71. There's actually 71 attributes that are now being fed into our master controller. It almost cut it in half, so that's, that's pretty good. So that's a good one to use to help kind of streamline and optimize your master controller. Finally, the last thing we need to do in order to make this into something we can use is to actually output it. That's this field down here. So we can give it a name, baby head controller. And once I hit create, you'll notice these fields fill in automatically. I can hit create. <clears throat> I'll get a, a dialog box that says attached to composite. It wants to know where to put this within our node view. And we can choose it from our drop down box. That's one way of doing it. I'm going to hit cancel really quickly. I'll show you a second way of doing it. You can even just, at this point now, you can select a composite and just hit create, and it will automatically pull us into our next step. And now what it's doing is, it's, where does it want to put the database of all of those attributes? Remember the, whatever it was, what was it, 79? Or sorry, excuse me, 71? Where is it going to put that database? By default, it's going to create a folder called script, a subfolder called scripts within your Harmony scene structure. And it's going to, you can give it a name if you want. I'm going to hit save. Actually, I'm going to call it something different. I'll hit save and hit yes. And that's it. You notice it created a controller. I can close this. And now that we have this controller, what we can do is, right now it's kind of sitting in the middle of our baby. So I'm going to hit copy and paste some my standard head pose just away. I'm going to leave these poses alone. I want to make sure I don't uh, wreck them. So I'm going to copy and paste my standard front head over here. And now with my animate button on and with my transform tool selected, I can take that point and manipulate it and voila, or voila, the head moves around and follows that point. So right now the controller is maybe not in the best location. It's kind of smack dab in the middle of our baby head. You'll notice there's a green port above our master controller. We can just add a peg to that and we can actually now nest it anywhere we want or composite it any way we need need to within our network, uh, any way that makes sense for you and your production. Um, and now we can, with that peg attached to our master controller, um, I can turn my animate button off. And right now I'm gonna use my translate tool and I'm gonna push that master controller over here. Just make, for now I'll put it here, but again, you can put this anywhere you want. And now that's kind of out of the way, I can see my baby's head a little more clearly or cleanly go back to my transform tool and manipulate that widget. And it's as simple as that. It really is um, not too hard to do. Uh, you'll notice as you manipulate the point because it's interpolating between those poses, you'll notice that sometimes things will kind of click or suddenly I'm trying to get it to make it do like that ear, for example, this screen ear, the screen right ear. Um, as you kind of drag it over 
between your two points that you fed into the master controller. At some point in time, it's going to click or maybe move in ways that are unexpected. That's kind of normal and it's not out of the ordinary for your master controller to, um, to, do, to behave that way. Um, the way to fix that is to app simply build more poses and feed your master controller uh, those poses, which is something I'd like to underscore in this video is that your master controller will only be as smart as you make it. Okay, now that we have a basic master controller put in place, let's talk about two common issues that come, that come with master controllers and how to fix them. So here we have our baby, and again, we already have the eyes looking around. And uh, let's pretend, for example, that something happens over here. Um, you know, something catches the baby's attention, and we need to take those pupils, and we'll push them down here, because something is grabbing the baby's attention. And now that I look at it, uh, I'm not super happy with the posing of the head. Maybe I'd like to take that head and just tweak its pose just a little bit more. And I'll take my master controller and I'll manipulate it just a little bit because I'm unhappy. Hey, uh, well, that's a bummer, isn't it? The eyes just popped back. Well, the reason that's happening is, is if you remember, we fed a bunch of values into our master controller, right? And the master controller, which again, those values would be over here, if you remember correctly, those eyes are kind of, mm, let's put it this way, for lack of a better term, they're kind of hard-coded currently into our master controller. So how do we fix that? So unfortunately, as of this recording, there is no way to edit an existing master controller. What you would have to do is go back in and create a new master controller. So let's do that now. Let's, if you remember, we'll select our baby head because that has all the values that we want to include. Let's fire up our grid wizard and I'll hit OK because if you remember from our previous segment, Everything's already green. It already has all of our poses remembered from the last session that we ran here, which is great. It's gonna help us out. Um, let's go back to this box, if you remember. We talked about this box in the last chapter. Um, what we wanna do is we wanna make a new grid wizard, a new master controller that does not have those eyes built into the database. So what we'll do is we'll navigate through here and here's all the nodes that I'm looking for. Pupil, there it is. So there's pupil left. That's this guy right here. And if you wanted to be even more specific, there's all the attributes it's pulling into the into the master controller. There's the pupil. Let's let's remove that pupil from the new master controller that we are about to build. And I'll just select my pupil and I'll just hit the little trash can. And now it's gone. Let's find the other pupil. Where is it? Pupil right. Hit the trash can again. It's gone. And now, again, all of our poses are, have been added to our grid. I'll make a new name here. Baby, no, no pupils. P-U-P-I-L-S. And I'll select the composite. And I'll hit create. And I'll hit save. And now we have MC baby, no pupils. Just popped up. Let's get rid of this out of the way. MC stands for master controller in case you didn't, in case you didn't guess that. And now we just made a new master controller with no pupils involved. We told them that when we were making the new, um, when we were making this new master controller, we have taken the pupils out of the database. So let's add a peg on there. Turn our animate button off. Use our translate tool. Let's grab that like that for the sake of uh, simplicity or what am I trying to say? Uh, consistency. So now we have a master, we have a master controller where I excluded the pupils from. Let's turn our animate button back on. Let's go back to our posing. Here's our new master controller with no pupils involved. We can even hide the other one. Let's hide it. Hey, this bring, well, this let's let me make an, an aside here. Um, I just accidentally hid my master controller, the one I wanted to use, the one I just made. How do we show our master controllers? Well, since I just did it by accident, this is a good opportunity to show how how to show our master controllers. There's actually a few ways. We can select the master controller from the node view or the timeline, and you can just hit show controls like usual. That's one way of doing it. Let me hide it again. The other way to do it is to select a group that you know may or may not have some master controllers in it, and going up to our master controller, 
toolbar, there is actually a button that says show master controllers. We hit that and it will show us all of the controllers that are hanging out inside of that group. So let's get back to where we were. That's how you will show and hide your master controllers. Let's get back to where we were. So now we made this new one with a hat that we excluded the pupils from. So now when I manipulate the head, remember that rattle just happened or some, something just is drawing the baby's attention to down here. And now I, I can manipulate the head and the pupils will stay put again because we just excluded them from the master, this master controller. Let's talk about a second way to handle that issue of elements kind of oddly popping back into their poses. And for this example, um, we talked about the pupils, but for this example, let's use the brows. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I told you I put some deformation in the brows so I can get a little bit of play out of it. And of course, above the brow, I have a peg in there so I can push the whole element around for expressive purposes. Let's reset that. So let's manipulate our baby head here. Let's get a little bit of movement here. So if I was unhappy with that positioning of this brow, let's see, I need to get the baby to look a little angry or something, I don't know. And then we take that brow and we kind of push it down a little bit like so. Now, if you remember, just like before with the pupils, if I needed to adjust this head a little bit, watch what happens to the brow there on the screen, right? Pops back up again, because the master controller is always trying to feed it back into the pose that you gave it. So, and if you remember with the pupils, I went back and made a second master controller um, that excluded the pupils. But let's talk about a second way to handle this with the brow. You know, one thing we can do is have a peg sitting that's sitting on top of our brow for that is sole purpose is to push the brow around inside of the master controller. And then what you can do is have another peg that sits between the two of them for expressive purposes. And I already have these pegs kind of put in there ahead of time. So this is more of an organizational type thing um, where again, I have this peg and this peg. Here's my brows. These guys, these guys right here, there's brow, what is that brow left and here's brow right. Um, these pegs, I have a little MC after them. That means I'm, these particular pegs are the sole purpose of these is just to tell the brow where to be inside of the master controller so I can get that head to move around. But I'm going to insert another peg in between and these are going to be used for expressive purposes. So I can manipulate my baby head like so. And then when I want to push that brow down for an expressive purpose, say for example, to get a little more of a push there to get, you know, to really push that expression a bit more, I'm using that new peg that's again, solely for the purposes of expression. And now if I need to manipulate my master controller a little bit, the brow, hey, get over here, the brow will stay. Let's talk about a second common issue when dealing with master controllers. Um, you may notice I have a, up, an updated element for the baby mouth. It's an asymmetrical design, whereas we have a little cheek crease in the corner here, and it's slightly skewed off to the side. And these are the exact same poses I did before, um, but we're using the new mouth. And you'll notice that the mouth flips as our baby looks to the screen left or screen right. And again, this is a little bit more of an expressive purposes or for, for design purposes, I should say. So let's see what happens when I make a master controller using that mouth. So when I manipulate over here, everything looks pretty good. We can move around, that mouth's looking okay. But as soon as I start to move this way, the mouth begins to interpolate in a pretty undesirable way, I must say. This is kind of unusable, right? Um, now, why is it doing that? If you remember, uh, the master controller will take all of those points and it will interpolate between them in order to find where it's, where it's heading. And if you look, let's go back to our original poses that we fed into our master controller that I did off camera, um, but I followed the exact same steps as before. Let's look at where the mouth is. So here it's the crease is in screen right, screen right, screen right. But then when the baby head turns to the screen, to screen right, looks screen right, I should say, suddenly the mouth crease goes screen left. So in between here is our problem area. So let's see, how do we fix that? The best way to fix that is to build an extra set of poses that will have the mouth flipped 
that's the first thing we'll need. So what we'll need to do is re where am I at? This one. So between here, here, and here, I'm going to copy those poses, but I will have a flipped mouth. And I've already done that, or I've already completed that task. I have it hiding over here. And here's the baby looking over there. Now the baby looks down, looks mid, or looks front, looks up. Now watch this. We're going to repeat those last three poses, but watch what happens to the mouth. Mouth flips. This is the key here. Same three poses, but we have the mouth flipped. And of course, baby looks green right, and the mouth is correctly posed there. So now what we did, so basically what we did, we just added three new poses in there, but with the mouth flipped. And let's just get rid of this old mouth for now. Let's just remove it and hide it, go away. Because we're, we're going to need to make a new master controller. Select our baby head. Let's go up here into our grid wizard. Here's where we need to create a new grid wizard. We need to, since we added three new poses that we're going to put into the into the grid what we need to do is make a new one unfortunately we have to make a fresh one it's going to have four columns instead of three and still we can keep our three rows so we just need to add in an additional column here um, i'd also like to point out that this is where you can fine tune where you want the center of your grid wizard to be you can also fine tune the cell size in other words how many fields tall or small you may want your grid wizard to be. Um, I'm going to leave them as default. The only thing I'm going to change is just to have a grid that is a four by three grid. I'm going to hit OK. Now again, these are all red, so what we have to do is feed our new sets of poses in here. That would be these guys right here. That extra set of poses where there's a flipped mouth, and we do it exactly like we did before. We'll assign the head here, hit OK and just go right down the row of assigning these poses. This isn't too bad. Here's where it gets the important part. Here is the repeat of the last three poses, but the mouth will be flipped and we'll just put them right here. Here's where those three repeated head poses with the flipped mouth will be. And let's finish off our grid wizard. We're almost finished. Okay, great. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do, and this is really important, if you can use your imagination, pretend, pretend this or pretend we spit this out as a master controller and we manipulate our widget. What'll happen is the mouth will still between these poses right here. Here is our magical three poses of the center head where the mouth flips. We'll still have that issue of the mouth oddly kind of flipping in an undesirable way, but we can use these position values to help us smooth that out. So what we need to do is tell Harmony to put this column right here, it's almost smack dab right next to the other column where the mouth will flip and it'll be almost imperceptible. So what we can do is we can type in a numerical value here and I'll do it really quickly. As you can see, when I start typing a numerical value, it starts pushing the column around. Let's put that back to that. The other thing we can do is just use these little buttons right here to kind of fine tune it. And let's just make it go down to almost as far as we can go. And I can make this go to a negative 0.99. And when I do that, boop, it's like sitting right on top. You can barely see it. I can use these little magnifying magnifying glasses to zoom in. And if I get crazy, crazy, crazy zoom in there, I mean, it's right on top of it. It's minuscule. Finally, the last thing we need to do, let's keep resetting this, by the way. There we go. The last thing we need to do is maybe take this column here and just push it over to something a little more agreeable, like a one, like a one. Yeah, a one will do fine. So now what we have is our fourth column with the flipped mouths. You can barely see it again because I'm so they're so stacked on top of each other. They're right there on top of each other. So that means when we manipulate the wizard, excuse me, when we manipulate um, the master controller, the mouth will flip instantaneously. So let's just quickly do that. Let's just add in mouth, flip, select the composite, give it a name, hit create, hit save. 
and let's just copy this someplace add a peg to it and let's hide the other one let's get that out of the way let's show our new one mouth flip let's move this out of the way so it's a little more accessible turn our enemy button back on use our transform tool <clears throat> and again copy and paste our 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 poses so we don't screw up anything from our of our build over here and now when I manipulate the wizard watch what happens when I get to the middle watch what happens to that mouth flip does it right instantaneous there's no odd scaling or weird you know uh, trans um, scaling happening in there happens right or right away so that part gets a little tricky and I can understand it can be a little hard to understand the important thing is you just get those two points to sit directly on top of each other so that when you manipulate this point that flip happens almost instantaneously you can't even see it so before we wrap up let's talk about um, our layer properties of our master controller I access that just by clicking that little yellow box of our node here um, you'll also notice too that our master controller will appear down in our timeline which also will also have its own keyframe below attributes so you can change a lot of this stuff over the course of time but what that also really is doing is remembering the position of this point here as you manipulate it but let's get back into here our our layer properties um, the first tab is where we can kind of control and customize how our master controller will display the first one is our show controls mode so by default it's set to normal again it will we've talked about that beforehand um, when you open a fresh scene the master controllers will not be showing um, but you can show them again by selecting them or using any other method that we talked about before uh, but this drop down box will hit on load which means the second you fire up your fresh scene your master controllers will be there and ready for you to start using however when you have on load selected you're still capable of hiding them but if you have it set to always it will always be there you can't for the life of you get rid of it so that's something you can play with in order to make it customizable the 2d point is referring to this actual the widget that you're manipulating that's just um, that's uh, where harmony is storing that information as you manipulate it um, and it, some of this is to like to show the grid limits that's the little bounding box that harmony generates for you the label space um, the grid lines just giving you a point of reference of where your grids are you can change the name of the label all of this stuff is really fun to play with you can change your color of your widget to suit your character whatever you want so a lot of fun you can play with in there just to help customize your master controller a little bit so finally in wrapping up I, I you know I know this was a lot of material uh, they're, they're great master controllers are really great um, you know I have the baby heads looking around here in this pose we have them looking around um, but I also went ahead and made a, a snappy little master controller for the pupils so I can get them to look around independently now. So you really can build out and flesh out your characters. And I built this little piece of animation right here just with my current master controllers, um, with these two master controllers. And again, this artwork's super basic. There's nothing, there's no... And I feel like I got a lot of play out of very little, and I think that's kind of important. And what I would like to say in wrapping up is that I'd like to demystify master controllers a little bit. One of the things I see when people make them generally for the first time or students make them for the first time, they go like this and they go, oh, whoa, look at it. It's moving around and they get all excited. And yeah, it's really cool looking because now your character is kind of coming to life before your very eyes. What I would like to say is that master controllers, again, I think I said it previously, they're only as smart as you make them. And it's still, it is up to you to bring your animator's eye to the scene in order to help bring your characters to life. If you want access to this rig, I'll have it available on my Gumroad store. Please go check it out. And then that about wraps it up, guys. I really appreciate you coming here. I know this was a lot of material. I know it was a really long one, but I think it was important to go over all those really important topics. And again, master controllers, this is just scratching the surface. There's tons of tons and tons and tons of other things you can do, like sliders that we didn't talk about, and also the stack wizard, also really fun. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you guys soon.